Timber and coal form steel are typically interchangeable for each other. They typically serve a similar purpose, but there are differences between them. But what are they? Which one's cheaper? Which one has less environmental impact? So which one is right for your project? Let's break it down in this timber versus coal form steel breakdown. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. So what are the similarities between coal form steel and timber? What applications do they use them for? Well, both cold form steel and timber can typically form up a lot of the parts in most residential buildings, whether it be the walls, whether it be the ceiling, whether it be the floor. They offer a lightweight option that allows you to frame up your building as you want. It's normally like those traditional stick construction frames. It also allows for a lot of prefabrication. So both these options, you can prefabricate them offsite and bring them to site, allowing for quick, easy assembly. So both of them offer a wide variety of different uses from both your commercial, your residential, and your partition wall situations. So both of these offer a similar structural role and also offer a similar constructability and reduction in construction costs. So what are the differences? And we'll start off with durability. Durability has different aspects to them and there's both pros and cons to both of them. We're starting off with probably the, the best and easiest one. Most of the time, cold form steel will win out. It's typically better, it's not susceptible to rot. It doesn't really change over time. It doesn't degrade, so it doesn't get stronger or it doesn't get harder. Its timber, when it's exposed, has a change in moisture, potentially causing it to short, shrink and form as it ages. You don't see that same problem with cold form steel. It's also not susceptible to insect attacks. So in the wrong locations, typically, cold form steel is almost recommended, which can't be attacked by termites where typically timber is very susceptible unless it's treated on a regular basis. It's also not susceptible to swelling or susceptible to warping over time, especially when in contact with water. Yes, cold form steel can potentially rust, but most of the times it's treated, making it better in the long term. This is where timber can sometimes be better under fire. So when talking about durability and fire, it may be a little bit contradictory, but timber, because it can burn itself out, although it is flammable, potentially can perform a little bit better under fire. Where cold form steel, when it gets heated up, it reduces in strength, can potentially damage it over time. But the benefit of cold form steel in a fire situation is the fact that it doesn't actually build to the fire load. But most of the time, timber will actually perform a little bit better because you'll potentially get charring on the outside where the main structure can stand up. Strength is also another area that typically cold form steel wins out. It is the stronger material on both compression and tension. So if we're talking about a strength to weight ratio, most of the time, if not always, the cold form steel will be winning. It'll be the lighter structure, but leading to a similar strength. So you can have a lot less material in a cold form steel structure framing. That also means, but typically if you're trying to aim for similar span ratios, you can span a lot further with a cold form steel structure so you can have less supports. So you're having bigger spans and you're having a lighter structure, typically with your cold form steel. Now that does not mean that timber is not bad in strength. It can get quite strong, but when you're talking about a strength to rate ratio, typically timber is worse off in those situations. The other problem with timber, especially under load, it does creep similar to concrete. So you will potentially get additional deflections underneath the timber structure over time, where you don't have that same problem in steel. Although you do have the elastic shortening, but both timber and steel have elastic shortening problems. The cold form steel doesn't have that creep issue. But how about cost? Well, cost here is a different story. Most of the time you can get timber at a cheaper cost than you can get a cold form steel structure. Depends on where you're sourcing it from, but a lot of the time, especially weight and for spacing, timber is typically cheaper overall. However, this can vary over time depending on availability and what stock you have available to you. There is potentially savings in your cold form steel structure. Your cold form steel structure can typically be cheaper as it's a little bit easier to customize on the manufacturing line as they can bring out different sizes and shapes that are more practical for what you need it for. So it can produce a little bit less labor. So sometimes you get a cost offset from the additional higher cost, but your overall cost is slightly less sometimes because the labor reduction on site is significant. So depending on which one you're looking for, you just need to cost it out. But in this case, I'll give it to timber as opposed to the cold form steel structure. Another benefit in timber structures is the fact that it's more easily adaptable. All you need is a real saw and a chisel and you can modify it easily on site. So if you get something to the site and it's not exactly as perfect as you need it, you can modify it. Now you can do this with cold form steel structures, but it's a lot harder. The customizability of the timber structure definitely wins out in this situation. That cold form steel structure will be a lot harder to modify when it gets to site. With the timber, all you need to do is break out the saw, maybe a couple of chisels and nails, and you can modify that structure to however you need. So you can more easily modify it on site. So timber wins out for easy modifications on site. 
So when we're talking about environmental impact, this we've broken down into two ways. We'll talk about sustainability and we'll talk about carbon footprint. Well, we're talking about carbon footprint, the clear winner will be timber, but why is that? Well, the production of the cold form steel, although lighter, so transport costs are less and less impactful, there is a lot more intensive energy required to get to your cold form steel structure, whether it be the manufacturing of the raw form, whether it be producing that steel, there's a lot more energy needed to go into it. Now, this is improving over time as people are becoming more and more carbon conscious and making sustainable production of steel. But still, timber is going to be your better option here. And a lot of time when you bring timber into your building, you actually embody carbon into your building. So it's actually pulling carbon out from the atmosphere and you're putting it in your structures. So it's actually reducing potentially the carbon footprint of your building underneath the right situations. Sustainability here. Now this is where it's a little bit different. Although cold form steel is not from a renewable source, it is definitely more sustainable. So once you get into site and reuse it on other projects, the recyclability is a lot higher out of your cold form steel structure. So if we're talking about the cradle to grave analysis, this is where you'll get a better sustainability potentially out of the cold form steel structure due to the cradle to grave analysis than you would a timber structure. But it doesn't mean timber is very bad here. It's a very marginal increase. So if we're talking about carbon footprint, timber definitely wins. If we're talking about sustainability, there's probably a little bit of a one up for your cold form steel. So let's break it down into the different types of structures for going from a low to mid rise to a high rise to try and see if we can break it down and break this deadlock. Well, timber and cold form steel are almost one for one in your low to mid rise, especially in your low rise structures. A lot of time you can save a lot of time and energy by building a cold form steel structure underneath the right way. So if something doesn't need to be very bespoke and can be maintained its framing, your cold form steel structure will typically win out due to the manufacturability off site and bring it to site in the single form. However, if you've got something that's a little bit more bespoke, especially in the small residential structures, timber is a little bit better here. As we talked about before, it's more adaptable. You can more easily modify it for the situations that you need. Whereas your high rise building, definitely a winner for the cold form steel structure in this situation. As you have limited space on site, you need minimal modifications and you've typically designed every floor the same. Your cold form steel structure is typically winning up in this situation. As a lot of time you potentially need to have modifications and prefabrication on site for the timber structure, we're in a high rise building where you need rapid construction and everything is built to precision and potentially you can do a lot of off site modifications. So site on time is going to be king. Your cold form steel structure is typically winning here. And that's why most of the time you see your cold form steel structures in those big construction sites. There's also a little bit of winning in those high rise buildings is the fact that you can potentially shape it how you need to. So you can make specific studs or specific details to stop transmission of sound through walls. Timber here, it's a little bit harder as you potentially need to stagger studs where you can have things such as quiet studs that can be built from design to help stop transmission of sound through walls. So especially in those partition walls and big high rise buildings, you can put the right studs in the right situations. This is where cold form steel has a little bit of a one up and it's its ability to be prefabricated. Yes, you can prefabricate timber to some extent, but it's limited. Where cold form steel, you can form it and shape it exactly how you want it and you know exactly what product you're getting. So potentially saving you a lot of time through the prefabrication. Now, if you want something a bit more bespoke, timber is definitely a little bit easier as you can modify it on site. Although cold form steel structure was the winner here, there is definitely not an easy or one size fits all. And if you're looking to increase your steel design, I've got a rules of thumb of steel design here that will bring your design to the next level, making your design steel structures easier. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there is two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of the YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, increase your knowledge, keep learning, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.